Like the seven Chaos Emeralds, the forces that be have come together to bring us seven hilariously written creepypastas about Sonic for us to go through. The possibilities are never ending. Man, that's a good song. So much good music in these games, ah! Except for you! That's right everyone, today we're back again with some Sonic creepypastas that I have come across over my travels. Now I have made a list like this before, but since I am a self-proclaimed Sonic fan, I thought that it would be fun to revisit the topic once more, especially now that the Sonic movie is out and I actually found it to be really enjoyable. Remember when I used to say that Sonic couldn't be scary though? Yeah, I was proven wrong. It was really cool seeing the blue blur on the big screen after having grown up with the games and shows about him, so as a Sonic fan, it was really cool. It was fun, damn it. Except for this part. At least I was entertained, and I thought the ending was really sweet, too. So here we are, seven Sonic creepypastas for us all to enjoy. Now, as I always say, if any of the authors of the following stories come across this video, please do not take it to heart. I'm not criticizing you as people, only your stories. We all write or create funny stuff when we're younger. For example, when I was 11 and went to school and had to do creative writing assignments, I too used to write self-insert fanfictions about encountering Sonic characters and going on adventures with them. <laughs> yeah, I, I did this stuff too, and you gotta start writing somewhere. Just make sure that you are ready to post your stuff on the internet. In fact, while we're at it, check this out. Here are some of my old MS Paint drawings that I did back in 2012. I had just turned 14 by this point, dude. 14! Look at these masterpieces! <laughs> you are gonna improve with every creative project you set your mind to, and I would never want to take that away from any of you. And I want everyone to be kind to these authors. Positive encouragement can go a hell of a long way, and it's obvious to me that a lot of these stories were just written for fun, and that's totally fine with me. Keep writing, keep improving. With that said, done and dusted, it's time we delve into these terrifying stories about Sonic. Let's go! Number 7. Sticks.avi While searching at 4Shared, I was looking for files that have the work stick on them. <laughs> How very specific. Why are you doing this? However, I saw an file which is called sticks.avi. I decided to download it and clicked on it. While watching it, it was that 2014 Cartoon Network show Sonic Boom made by Sega. The intro played normally, but the colors are inverted, the audio is reversed, and after the intro, there is an title card. In this title card, Styx was just staring at me blankly, as if she was staring into my soul, as the words spelled Styx. Just like that. Man, did they take the episode title Sticks seriously, I thought. To note, it had said it was written by death. Yeah, I think that's pretty important to note. This is where the episode just started. Tails is walking through the village of Bygone Island. Everything seems silent, until when Styx shows up and says, Welcome to your grave, sucker! Why was Styx like that? She was crazy and paranoid in the show. Then, Styx pulls out a knife and stabs Tails with it, and blood comes out of Tails. Not CGI blood, but realistic blood. Of the hyper kind? Then, Styx starts working on something. She seems that she is planning to kill the others. You know, as an aside, Styx's design has always reminded me of Marine the Raccoon, and am I the only one who thinks this? I would like to see Marine in more Sonic games. I know a lot of people found her annoying, but I thought she was a fun character. Man, Sonic Rush Adventure was so good, and super underrated too. For a while, it was actually my favorite DS game as a matter of fact. Getting to explore the open seas and discovering all of its secrets was so exciting as a kid. I highly recommend it. Alright, back to the story. Next, it fades to an clip from Unlucky Knuckles. You know, the clip where Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails are playing Goofaball. Goofaball? I haven't seen Sonic Boom yet, but I hear it's good. However, this clip didn't have Tails and the sky is dark. Plus, Knuckles has no eyes. When Knuckles says, you kidding me? It has nothing to do with my swing. It has everything to do with luck. Styx shows up and kills Knuckles with her knife. However, it cuts to black and you could hear Knuckles screaming for one minute. I mean, that's just a game of the Sonic Boom game in a nutshell, isn't it? After that, it shows Knuckles' dead body with no eyes. Sonic is pretty much shaken a bit. <laughs> just a bit though, after seeing one of his closest friends die right in front of him. Then, Amy Rose comes and says, Sonic, I need to- Oh my god, Styx, what are you doing to Knuckles? Then Styx said, uh, killing his body? 
I mean, she's not lying. Before Sonic could say something in an unknown language, but it was hard to translate. What? Before he can say something in an unknown language? What? I think this part is poking fun at common creepypasta cliches. Then Styx stabs Sonic with a knife. Later, after she killed everyone, including Eggman, Orbot, Cubot, and the other robots, Styx turns to me and said, Looks like I killed everyone. Now you are next. And the screen fades black. Styx is truly the most terrifying of characters to come after you. Then I get to the credits. Before I deleted it, I noticed one thing. 2012 at Cartoon Network, Sonic the Hedgehog. To my anger, Sonic Boom did not come out in 2012. It came out in 2014. Anger. That's an interesting reaction to a year. Really must have hated the movie, huh? Then I decided to delete it. Why would anyone do that? Also, if you see Sticks.avi in Foreshared, don't download or watch it. So, did Sticks ever catch up with the main character? What was all that about? I guess that's left up to the mystery of it all. I mean, alright, the spelling in this story for the most part was fine. There weren't any overt typos in there except for some incorrect uses of A and N and a few grammatical issues and small typos. Other than that, it was okay in terms of spelling, though it could be a little confusing at times. However, the story does fairly little to stand out from the crowd and uses concepts already popularized by other creepypastas like You're Next, for example, and very little is actually explained in it, such as where this weird episode originated from, such as who made it, why it was made, and so on, unless it is implying that Cartoon Network themselves made it? It doesn't make much sense. The story doesn't develop these things further, which just leaves you scratching your head afterwards some more answers would have been appreciated. There was an attempt here, and I did like how the story showed off some Sonic Boom knowledge, but it fell quite short. Ah well, next story. Number 6, Sonic 2, Drown Zone. I was in my attic when I spotted my old Sonic 2 cartridge. Oh, I mean, Chartridge. I thought I should play it and put it in my Sega Genesis. The title screen was kinda different. The sky was red. The logo looked rusted. Tails was missing too. I thought this as a glitch and still played on. <laughs> boy oh boy does this sound familiar. It is okay to be inspired by other stories, but don't make these inspirations this obvious. Instead of going to Emerald Hill Act 1, it went straight to Aquatic Ruin Act 1. Instead of saying the normal title, it just said Drown Act 0. It kind of freaked me out at first, but I soon chuckled at it. Because if you stay in the water too long, you'd usually drown, so I brushed it off a hidden easter egg level. Some of this writing is quite confusing, I gotta say, it's really weird. This definitely needed more proofreading. It was pretty much the same level, except Tails wasn't following me. He was completely removed, as if I pressed only Sonic. At the end, instead of a sign or a boss battle for that matter, it was Tails' body. Dead, frozen, and blue. His eyes were replaced by X's, but they weren't cartoony X's, they were more like stitches. Some glitchy text was above him. You were too slow, Sonic. Sonic got down on his knees and sobbed softly, as the screen faded to black. It went back to the title screen, except at the bottom it read, R.I.P. Well, that was way too brief, and I think the story could have no doubt benefited from a more proper conclusion, because as it stands, there really is none. For example, show how Sonic reacts to the shock of losing his best friend, explain who or what killed Tails, and show how the protagonist of the story is reacting to these things as well. As it stands, the story was just left on a really unsatisfying ending unfortunately, which is a shame because I can see good stuff in there, you know, of Sonic losing his best friend and reacting accordingly. The story kind of unintentionally reminded me of like sad Sonic fan videos that I used to watch on YouTube as a kid. It kind of brought me back. Alright, back to the story. The spelling overall was mostly fine, though there were some words and letters missing at times which resulted in some real head-scratching moments. Proofreading is important, and I think the story needed more content. That's my advice for now. Number 5. Sonic Death Game As a child, I loved Sonic games. Not anymore? I guess Sonic Forces got mixed reviews. Every show, game, plush. But after this incident, I sold everything to do with Sonic. Let me get to the story. It was a cold day in February, when I was cleaning out the garage and I found a small box. My first sense was to open it, but I wish I never did. It was filled with all my Sonic games, but there was an extra. It was called Sonic Death. Weird name, 
But I didn't care. I wonder if we're gonna find out who put that there. Probably not. Main character seems pretty chill about it though. I put it on my computer, but it wasn't at all like I remembered. It was black, and then it had Tails crying hysterically next to a pool of blood. Sonic came up behind him and said, I know, but we have to move on. I miss him too. But Tails kept crying. Sonic came closer to Tails, and this was when it got serious. Tails punched Sonic in the face, pinned him to the ground, took a knife, and slit Sonic's throat. My my, where did that come from? A two months later card came up. I moved Tails around a little bit. Some words at the bottom said, You must get away from the cops. I was freaking out! No Sonic game would be this way. I was an innocent person. Yeah, Tails isn't though. So for some dumb reason, I went towards the cops. Next it had Tails inside a prison, and with text saying, you got me in jail, so it will get you in hell. Hey, Tails, I think you're being quite unreasonable here. I don't think that is a fair trade. The next morning when I came out of my bedroom, it was gone. What was gone exactly? The game? With fire painted on the walls, along with a note saying, I said I would put you in hell. Here you are. Nice, Tails gave them some sick new wallpapers of fire nonetheless. Any cool kid would appreciate that. If you ever find this game, destroy it. No matter if you burned your house to do it. I'm writing this as my last request before I go into the asylum. <laughs> Goodbye. Okay, I mean each to their own, but that seems a bit over the top to me. I don't know what you guys think though. I mean, maybe the main character is like the hound, you know, with a phobia of fire or something. Remember Game of Thrones? The final season still hurts, dude. At least the spelling in the story was sometimes okay, and it had some interesting concepts in the beginning, but that is unfortunately about it. At least the author tried, and that is commendable, and I think they're gonna make better stories in the future, but overall, this story fell rather short of its potential, because I was interested to see where it was gonna go in the beginning, when Tails was crying and Sonic was comforting him, but then Tails just killed Sonic, which to me came way too suddenly to be effective. I think it came across rather over the top for the setting, since it wasn't really built up to beforehand except for the one mention of Sonic death, and the progression of the plot was way too quick for what was happening, and as a result I don't really feel the ending of the story worked either. I would have liked to have learned more about why Tails snapped, and who actually passed away causing him to act this way, and how the main character deals with all of this, and why they end up where they do at the end. Maybe show more signs of Tails acting off before he does something terrible, which would have helped prepare the reader for what was about to go down later on. That would have improved the story in my opinion and added some clarity and context. Better luck next time, author. Next story. Number 4. Sonic3.exe Hey, that rhymes! Also, I gotta give the author this one props. At least they went through the effort of adding some supposed screenshots as evidence to their story. It is a little extra step there, and it is appreciated. Helps just a little bit with immersion. Today, I was playing Sonic Spinball on the Sega Genesis. The doorbell rang and a mailman came to deliver me a package that contains Sonic 3 on the Sega Genesis. Cody. Sonic 3. Amazing! I took Sonic 3, got in my room, and put Sonic 3 in my Genesis. Hey, if you're writing dialogue, don't write it like this. Otherwise, the reader is gonna be very confused, like I am right now. Obviously, I'm not mad or anything, I'm just pointing it out. Instead of the Sega logo being blue, it was red. After 5 seconds, the Sonic the Hedgehog logo was normal. But there were some differences. So it wasn't normal. The sky was grey. The water was blood red. Similar to Sonic.exe. I was playing as Shadow. Cody. Why is Shadow in a 16-bit Sonic game? I pressed start and there was no static. Just a sound. After 5 seconds, red text appeared. Welcome back. Stage 1 was called question mark question mark question mark. The background was black. Sonic.exe appeared with static for maybe 3 seconds. On the right, there was a large gold ring. I made Shadow jump into the ring. Shadow was in a spinball animation like if you were either playing Sonic 1, 2, 3 or Sonic and Knuckles, when Sonic runs and you hold right and press down, Sonic would do a spinball animation. Hey, at least you can tell the author knows their Sonic games. After a while, Shadow was still in the spinball animation. Sonic.exe came and killed Damn. Shadow. Next up was Silver the Hedgehog. Cody. I don't remember Sliver being in a 16-bit Sonic game. Before I press start, both of Shadow's eyes were red, even the pupils. I pressed start and the level was called Unnamed Level. The ironic part was that the level had no level name, but it did. Anyway, I kept Sliver. <laughs> Walk to the right. 
After 6 seconds, Sonic.exe appeared in front of Silver and the platform disappeared. Sonic.exe was levitating. Silver ironically wasn't. I watched Silver fall down in slow motion. Silver died. On the title screen, Silver has empty eye sockets. It looked like if both of his whole eyes were recolored black. Last up was Espio the Chameleon. Cody. Even Espio is not in a 16-bit Sonic game. I pressed start and the level was corrupted underscore file dot exe. The background was Gygas. I had Espio move around for a while until spikes came from the air slowly to the ground and killed Espio. Oh no, now he's an Espio sandwich. After Espio died, a text appeared stating, They're all dead. You can't escape me. I am God. With Slenderman sounds, a picture of Sonic.exe with his hands with blood. I turned around and I saw a Sonic.exe plushie. To be continued. Well, this story certainly wore its influences on its sleeves. Here's a story that was most likely written by a young author years ago who was clearly a big Sonic and Sonic.exe fan and wanted to add their own spin on the story with their own fictional experience with the games or characters. I actually used to do the same back in the day, believe it or not. I once wrote a creepypasta back in August of 2011 about me coming across a haunted Pokemon game, so I absolutely get what the author was going for here. It didn't work out that well with some rather confusing writing and some rather unoriginal and cliched ideas, but at least they tried. They most likely shouldn't have made a story so similar to an already well-established one because very, very rarely does that work out well, if at all. The formatting and spelling was poor and needed another revision. Now, I am fully aware that Geoshia's Lost Episode Wiki, Geoshia, Geoshia, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, which is where I found these stories, is a wiki specifically created for users to primarily make Lost Episode, Haunted Video Game, and sometimes spin off creepypastas, and that's totally cool in my eyes, as the official creepypasta wiki has basically outlawed any and all stories that fall under those categories. Now, I have absolutely no hate to the community on the Geoshia wiki. I find the wiki in general fun and inspiring, as it is very very clear to me that there are a lot of passionate writers there. I'm not surprised that there are stories like the one I just read, which basically acts as a continuation slash spin-off of Sonic.exe. I have no problem with authors making spin-off stories if they want to, write about whatever you would like, but my personal advice would be to try and come up with something new and original if you are to make a story like that, instead of just creating a general repeat of what came before, just with some swapped characters, which I feel is what happened with this story. No hate to the author, obviously, as they were clearly inspired by what they had read before. I don't blame them, as like I said, I've done the same, but I think more could have been done to set the story apart from the original Sonic.exe story. For example, instead of keeping the story restricted only to the game, how about we learn more about the main characters' life outside of it? How it affects them and their surroundings, their day-to-day -day life, and so on. That's just an idea that I thought of that I think would have set the story apart and made it a little better. All of this criticism is in good faith, as I want all of these authors to keep trying and build experience to create better stories moving forward. That's all I got for this story, and that's my advice for now. Number 3. Lost Episode of Sonic the Hedgehog Formatting. Formatting, please. I was walking around the city one day. I later went to the Salvation Army to find a VHS tape of Garfield and Friends. <laughs> Garfield and Friends? Why, 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 why that? Suddenly, I found a blank VHS. No label on it. I decided to bring it home. I paid for it, then went home. <laughs> Good that you clarified that. After that, I put it in the VHS player. There was some text that showed up. It said, owned by Dick Entertainment, do not duplicate. <laughs> I am very immature. To my surprise, it was The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. The theme song started out as normal. When I got to the title card, it said, SONIC THE MURDERER! I was confused since AOSTH is a kid's show. The episode begins with Sonic sitting on a rock when suddenly he gets a knife. He says, time to kill that fucking Robotnik! I was shocked. Why did Sonic swear? That's no good. Is every single Sonic character in these stories gonna get a knife? I mean, this is the third time this is happening in this video alone. You get a knife, and you get a knife, and you get a knife. Anyways, it cuts to Robotnik's lair. He says, I will turn that hedgehog to kitty litter. <laughs> <laughs> Sonic comes up and then says, Not today, fat ass! <laughs> That's rude, Sonic. You can't say that. Sonic takes out the knife and starts stabbing Robotnik to death. 
He then puts the body of Robotnik into a meat grinder. I, <laughs> I think you got him, Sonic. He then gets out and runs off, but Tails comes up and says, S -S Sonic? Sonic says, Robotnik is kitty litter, Tails. <laughs> <laughs> Damn! Turn that one right back around on him. It cuts to black and the screaming of Tails was heard. The episode ends there. Is that meant to imply that Sonic killed Tails too? And if so, why? You gotta give motivations to your characters, otherwise it's gonna fall flat. The credits started to roll, but some Japanese text comes up and it says... This. I smashed it in half. I spent the next hour thinking about what the fuck I was watching. Was this a morbid joke? I contacted the creator of the show and he said that an intern made this episode. <laughs> that intern deserves a raise, man. He made all of that on his own? He's got ambition, I'll give him that. He made it because his family never treated him well and his mother was the only one who loved him. <laughs> his mother later died after an unknown illness. I never want to watch AOSTH or play Sonic games again. All because of one intern, huh? To think one man can have such an impact. No one man should have all that power. Whatever you do, if you find a copy of this episode, do not watch it. Just immediately destroy it. However, when I got on my computer, there was a pic- When I got on my computer, there was a picture of Tails drowning set as my wallpaper. <laughs> well, that's interesting. Is the intern an expert hacker too? I mean, there's not much to mention with this story. Most of it is just the typical creepypasta stuff of finding a rare copy, interns, angry characters murdering each other, and, and so on. Couple that with some extremely confusing formatting and unnecessary details, and you've got a story that has some major flaws holding it back. It is quite clear to me that this is a first draft, or something of that sort, which only hampers it and makes it quite difficult to understand. If you want to make a good story, you gotta make sure it makes sense and is pleasant to read. Otherwise, from like a subjective standpoint, I kinda love this story to be honest. I love how outlandish and over the top it got, which in turn made it really entertaining. And hey, if it is entertaining, then it is entertaining. And that's awesome. Number 2. Sonic X Season 4 Episode 5 WMV now this is a short one. One day I was looking for Sonic X episodes, until I came down to the page where I found Sonic X episodes. <laughs> that one worked itself out. It was called Sonic X Season 4 Episode 5 WMV. Title drop. I was curious to watch to watch it, so I clicked it. At first, it flashed. That's when I heard static in it. It showed a picture of Amy and Tails looking at the screen confused. Just as I am looking at this story along with weird sounds, as if voices were distorting the audio, and snaps and cracks, and also tones. Then it went to black and came back up with the same picture, but it was, however, static. When the video was over, I was not scared, though it was quite strange and short. And so was the story, strange and short. At least the main character ended up unbothered by the events by the end, which is nice. You wouldn't want this terrifying tale of a cursed computer file to have too much of an impact on the world. Again though, with this one, there seems to have at least been some extra effort at one point because there was a video attached. However, it seems to have been taken down since then. Other than that, it's way too short to even critique properly. It needed a bit more because as it stands, very little happens in it which just leaves the reader unaffected by the end. The story feels like a first draft or just unfinished and it definitely also required proofreading. The story was just way too brief to leave an impact. Ah well, it's time we move on to our final story. Number 1. Sonic Unleash Ed. Now this one right here is special, because look at these categories. One of them suggests that this is a troll pasta, while others suggest that this was just a funny story written by an author when they were young, who now looks back on it and laughs. I don't know what to believe, but we're gonna read this absolute masterpiece anyways. Here we go! I was very bored. I decided to play my favorite Sonic game. It's Unleashed. Not a bad choice. That game looks stunning to this day. But something was strange. In the cover art, it was Sonic Unleash Ed. I popped this on my Xbox 360 and it begun. There was written Sonic Unleash Ed. I press continue and whoa, the Sonic looks like it was Sonic.exe. I think it's just graphical glitches, but the chip is blood covered. 
Oh no, not Chip. I asked my bro if he hacked the game. He said no. And bro doesn't know anything in hacking Xbox 360 games. <laughs> okay, okay. This story is amazing. Not gonna lie. I'm honestly loving it. The way the main character is just consulting their older brother in a moment of desperation to try and make sense of all of this. It's great. But I went to Apatos. The Sonic was blood covered more and more. Then it went completely red. The ring sound was replaced by scream from the maze. I was scared. Time Eater said, you broke the game. I was completely surprised Be Akuz in Unleashed Time Eater doesn't exist. Then, that music went to Crazy Bus Theme. Then it has switched to Sonic 06. The end. Seriously, the end. I appreciate the firm stance the author takes there, signaling that that is in fact the end of their tale. I mean, honestly, I found that absolutely delightful. I appreciated how the main character acted so devastated by everything and earnestly went to their brother to ask for help. I appreciated the references to other games and internet culture in general. You can tell that back in the day when the author probably wrote this, they probably just took random bits and pieces from around the internet that intrigued them and put them all together here. And it just makes the whole thing so much fun. And the Sonic lore knowledge too. That was fantastic and really entertaining. So author, thank you so much for writing it. I really enjoyed it and I hope all of you watching did too. That was a glorious little short story. And hey, here's to more writing in the future to all of these authors. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Best of luck to ya. And there you have it. Those were 7 funny Sonic creepypastas for you all. I hope everyone had fun and got some good laughs out of the experience. It was a real journey and we hopped around from classic Sonic to modern Sonic and even some of the animated shows about him. When are we gonna get these Sonic movie creepypastas? I can't wait for those. It was also a lot of fun to just talk about Sonic and my favorite games and stuff like that. It was a lot of fun. With that said, thank you all for watching and for keeping Sonic in your hearts. If you enjoyed this video, why not like this video super fast and post your radical thoughts down in the comments below. Check out my social medias if you want to, or my Patreon page if you want to support the channel directly. I've also got merch in case that is something that interests you. Thanks for watching everyone, stay awesome. Good bye.